Welcome back to our final video of Help, There's a Teenager in My Home. You know, we've talked about several things so far. We've talked about how that you need to train your child, how you're the parent and they're not. How that, you know, we have rules, but we also have rewards. We talked about inspecting what you ex expect and how to, how to, how to uh, trust, but yet verify. And how home is the key and what happens at home and your example is really the key. And that's why on this last time, I want to encourage you that you've got to push your teenagers to grow. You got to push them to grow in the Lord. You got to push them to grow in their faith. You got to push them. Now, when I use that word push, some people see that as a negative. But you know, you've got to find ways. You got to find ways to share with them and show them on how to use their faith. Because here's the bottom line is here is my number one goal for my teenagers that when they got out of teenagehood, that they didn't just know that their mom and dad loved the Lord, but that they loved the Lord. You know, it wasn't enough for me to have faith, for my wife to have faith, but I want my kids to have their own faith. Because as kids grow up, they begin to make their own decisions and they begin to do their own things. And I wanted them to be able to know how to get those things by the only way that I know how to truly have life and that is through the Word of God and through Jesus Christ. I know, I remember when uh, uh, some of the first times that I ever saw my teenagers, you know, during worship, lifting their hands and worshiping the Lord. You know, I've been around this long enough, I've been doing this long enough. You know, there's a lot of times you can see signs of when someone's going through the motions versus when someone's doing it heartfelt. And there are many times that I step back and as I watch my teenagers worship the Lord, man, it brings joy to my heart because I want them to have that practice in their life. I want them to have that habit in their life. I want it to come from their own heart. And the only way I know how to do that is to be an example to them, but also show them how and why we're doing these things. You know, I just was reading in the book of Exodus today about how when God brought the Hebrew people, the Israelites, out of bondage into their promised land, he gave them many things to do uh, as, as celebrations or many things to do as remembrances. And he says it many times over and over, to show your children that you came out of bondage by the hand of the Lord. In other words, don't let the next generations forget about where you came from and how we got to this place. And let them know that I am the same God. I am the Lord. He says that over and over in the book of Exodus. I am the Lord. In other words, I am your source. I am everything. And you need to teach that and show it to those who come behind you, to those generations that come behind you. That's why it's important to make sure that when you're walking through life, when you're walking through, when you're pushing them to grow, you can tell them, hey, look, you know, I didn't have this advantage maybe when I was growing up, or maybe I made mistakes and I don't want you to make those same mistakes because I want you to start off life on the right foot. Can God save people? Absolutely. Does God redeem people? All the time. But as for our children, and this is our heart, we don't want, we praise God for people in our church that have been set free from drugs or have uh, found a way to have a successful marriage after maybe a failed marriage. We, we praise God for all those things. But that's not what we want for our kids because our kids can start off on the right foot. They have all the potential in the world. But that word potential is just that, it's potential. It's not realized until they put into action themselves the Word of God and their relationship with the Lord. Let me give you one more example of this. You know, we, we are raising our kids in a generation of complainers. You know, we have all kinds of apps now to where you can critique everything, or you can complain about this, or you can complain about that. And we see this, this is nothing new, but we see it in the Word of God as well, where they were brought out of, out of uh, the land of bondage. And then what do they start doing immediately to Moses and Aaron? 
complaining, complaining. I can't believe it. I mean, they walked across the dry land in the sea, and yet they start what? They start complaining. See, so you have to, to raise, you have to input that into your own teenagers. Look, we're not complaining, why? Because we're grateful to the Lord. We are grateful to the Lord. You know, in Philippians chapter two, verse 14, it says, do everything without complaining or arguing. Man, what a scripture. I use this scripture all the time before we go on trips with the youth. I say, look, one of my rules, I have three rule, I have three rules. My first rule is that I'm the boss and you're not. The second rule I have is we do everything without complaining or arguing, right? So you've got to build that into your teenager to where they have that grateful heart. Because in verse 15 it says, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a crooked and deprived generation in which you shine like stars in the universe. This is another lesson that you've got to really put into your teenagers. You are not like the world. You are not like everybody else. I'm not raising you to be like everybody else. You're a child of God. You're a son or daughter of God. You were called to shine like stars in the universe. We were called to be an example to others around us of what God can do if you will open your lives to the Lord. See, they need to know why we do what we do. Why are you going to church? Because I need it. I tell my kids, I need church. Man, I gotta I got have that refilling of the Word of God. I gotta have that refocus all the time. I try to stay focused in my life on a daily life, but there's something about coming to church and serving the Lord. You know, that's the other thing with my kids. We don't just come to church, we serve in the church. We don't just serve in the house of God, we serve God outside the house of God. All these things, see, I want their faith to be real, not just something that's a bunch of things that they've heard or a bunch of mantras that they just repeat because that's all they've known why we believe what we believe, why we do what we do, so they can start seeing the fruit of God in their own lives, and they can be strong, and they can be cheerful, and they can be full of joy and love and peace, and they can shine in this universe like stars, which God has called us to do. So I want to encourage you and let you know, look, if you have a further questions or you got things that we didn't cover that you'd like for me to cover, please put it in our comment section down below or get an email to us or reach out to us and we'd be more than happy to answer. We are, we are here to help you raise your kids in a godly home because we are so excited about what this next generation can do for the Lord. And look, the reality is, is oh my goodness, this culture was one way, me growing up, it's a completely different way now. It's gone way, way off track. So they need this not just less, they need it more now than ever before. Be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, maybe even uh, click that notification button so you hear when never, new content comes up. And then stuff that's coming forward. Look, watch the stuff with your teenager. Talk about what I'm talking about. Have conversations with your teenagers. If you don't know all the answers, that's fine. You can tell them, look, I don't know, but I will find the answer out. Look, God will lead you and guide you. As a matter of fact, let me pray for you right now. Father God, I pray for each and every parent that's watching this video right now. I pray that their lives are blessed. I pray that not just their life, but the generation after us is blessed. As we tell the generation after us all the great things you have done. And I thank you for Holy Spirit, you Holy Spirit of God. Now you're leading and guiding us on what to say and how to say it and when to say it. And that each and every teenager, each, each and every family represented here listening to me, every parent will not fear, but will walk in the faith that you've given us, that walk in the promises of your word, and will see each and every teenager uh, grow up without touching alcohol, without being promiscuous, without with remaining pure before you. And we're gonna see their lives grow and have wonderful fruit and we give you the praise and the glory for it it's in Jesus name amen God bless you